Man finally has visited the moon after all the ages of wishing and waiting. Two Americans with the alliterative names of uh, Armstrong and Aldrin uh, spent just under a full Earth day on the moon. They picked at it and sampled it and they deployed experiments on it and they picked away uh, some of it to pack with them and bring on home. Above and alone, a satellite of a satellite uh, that orbited the third member of the Apollo 11 team, Michael Collins. His bittersweet mission it was to guide and uh, watch over the command and the service module whose uh, power and guidance system provided the only means of getting home and still does. Now at this point in the journey with the lunar lander reunited with the mothership and the astronauts preparing for the rocket burn which will send them back home here, certain times and images remain that I've noted here. 4.17.40 p.m., 17 minutes and 40 seconds after 4 Eastern time, yesterday, Sunday, July 20th, 1969, the moment the lunar module touched down on the moon's surface and men will forever remember. 10.56 p.m. Sunday, the moment that Armstrong's foot first touched the lunar crust. And 1.54 p.m. today, the instant of liftoff from that newly named Tranquility Base Camp. There were the ghostly television pictures we all saw of Armstrong and Aldrin on the moon. Armstrong's first words, a small step for man, a giant leap for mankind. And Aldrin's two-word description, magnificent desolation. And left behind the plaque with the words, here men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon, July 1969 A.D. We came in peace for all mankind. And they left the flag of the United States flying there too. Left behind also hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of cameras and hardware and equipment discarded for the return flight. A small disc with messages microscopically reduced in size from the leaders of the world. An olive branch, symbolically at least, and two medals in memory of the three Americans and the two Russians who died in man's recent quest for the moon. All this uh, comes rushing back to us now as we think of the round trip moon flight still in progress and still some critical maneuvers yet to perform. And with this flight, man has really begun to move away from the earth. But with this flight, the new challenges for mankind, a challenge to determine yet whether uh, in coming to the moon, will we turn uh, our century old friend in the sky into an enemy to be invaded, conquered, exploited, and perhaps someday left as a desolate globe once more, or will we make the most of it as perhaps a way station on beyond to the stars? Apollo 11 still has a long way to go, and so do we. This concludes one of the longest scheduled broadcasts, the longest in the history of television, a rather short history it is, but I think a luminous one. We've been on the air 32 hours here at CBS News, a space headquarters. Uh, I, as the man who has sat here in the seat uh, a lot of the time, uh, sharing it uh, with uh, my colleague David Shoemacher and uh, with Wally Shira, Arthur Clark, and others, our distinguished guests we've had, and our correspondents all across the nation who you've seen on television. But for more than that, for the literally hundreds of technicians, engineers, associate producers, producers, writers who've produced some of the nice words that I hope we've spoken well for them here. Uh, for all of them, thanks uh, from Walter Cronkite at CBS News Space Headquarters, New York.